In this video, we're going to talk about the GitHub public roadmap. Yes, their roadmap. They've released it publicly very recently. And it's actually really interesting to see what new features are coming out. You may think, well, I'll just see the features when they appear or when other people start talking about them. But you can apply for beta access to some of these features if you want to get into these features early. And they will really help your open source projects, your workflow, and and when they come out of beta into general availability, then it will be in your private projects too. And you already know how to use them and you would have already learned the best practices and the best way to make the most of them. So I'm gonna go through the public roadmap and pick out a few awesome examples that I'm really excited to have a look at. One of them you may already be excited about and that's called Code Spaces. It's where you can have your complete development environment on GitHub. Yes, complete, IDE, Docker images, MongoDB, Postgres, Python, Ruby, PHP, Node, any version, it is gonna be such a game changer. Imagine going to a new project, not having to worry to install all these dependencies locally from databases to compilers and just saying for or branch, and then you can work immediately in the browser. And if you really like using VS Code locally, you can also connect your VS Code locally. But we're gonna get into that don't worry. If upskilling your skills, learning about GitHub, open source, so you can get the job, clients, and money that you deserve, then give the video a thumbs up, subscribe below, and leave a comment with any thoughts, suggestions, and ideas or videos you would like to see. And also head over to our community. We have an awesome Discord channel, an amazing group of people, and they're always keen to help and share their experiences. So we can chat in Discord between live streams and videos. And if you want to join an organization on GitHub and so you can get more open source experience, we do have a community GitHub organization. Raise an issue on the support repo so we can invite you to the organization and it can appear on your GitHub public profile. Right, back to this video. We're going to look at the GitHub public roadmap. As you can see, the public roadmap is split into quarters. We're coming to the end of Q3 now, which is finishing in September. And then we have Q4 for the remaining part of the year. And then we also have Q1 for the beginning of next year. And then there's the future work. So let's have a look what's coming out very soon. This is where you can get really excited. And then we'll jump into the next quarter so you can see what is really, really close, almost being available generally. And don't forget, you can apply for beta in a lot of these situations. I'm going to start off with some more of the little bit more boring ones. Then we've got some really exciting features that GitHub are releasing. So stay tuned. You've probably seen notifications on GitHub or on your email. Dependabot is sending you notifications that your dependency versions have vulnerabilities in them. A new feature that's coming out is it's going to notify you when your dependencies are out of date, even if there isn't a vulnerability. Another really exciting feature is a change in a default branch from master to main to align with Git and lots of other places that are changing their default branching naming strategy. I actually already have a video on this on my channel. And so you can change this already if you want. Don't forget to update your branch rules, and update any GitHub actions or any CI events that you have. You can do this already. My video is on it. It's a few simple steps. But by default, coming out very soon, it will change to the main branch for any new repositories. If you use GitHub actions already, you will realize that you can't delete workflows. So coming out soon, we'll be able to clear up those workflows, those logs, free up the space of data that we no longer need. And if you're not using GitHub Actions already, GitHub Actions is phenomenal. I should have a video out on it already. If I don't, it's coming out very soon. I'm currently editing it at the moment. But it is really good. It is taking CI and CD to the next level and basically putting it on steroids. Imagine triggering any event on GitHub from, from a push to a specific branch, from raising an issue, uh, to adding a label to an issue, to forking the project. Let's move into Q4. I know you've all been waiting for this one. This is the one that's talked about so much, GitHub Code Spaces. It is epic. I do have a live stream with Sam from the Microsoft team, and he was doing a demo on this live stream where we're setting up Code Spaces and using it. I mentioned before about GitHub Code Spaces. It is going to allow you to have your whole development environment on GitHub, which is such a game changer. Imagine going to any new project and being able to get set up just like that in 30 seconds, have the entire development environment. No need to worry about setting up Mongo or Postgres or MySQL or whatever the database they're using. 
And then whatever development environment they're using from Python to Ruby to PHP to JavaScript, you don't need to worry about that. It just sets it up and works immediately. That would be so brilliant because then you can focus on the actual value you can get from the project and giving back to the project. You don't need to worry about, I can't connect to this, what's the IP, what's the port, will all be set up and, and work. And you'll be using Docker behind the scenes and VS Code in the browser. You can also use your VS Code locally to connect to your development environment on GitHub in Codespaces. And you can even take those Docker files and run them locally if you wanted to, to do it offline. There are so many awesome things that are gonna be possible with that. I know everyone's really excited to get their hands on that. I have beta access and it is brilliant. I'm really looking forward to coming out and available for everybody because that's when things are gonna get really interesting. Anyone can come to the project and contribute immediately. And a lot of people who don't have a powerful enough laptop to run VS Code as well as Chrome, as well as YouTube and other things, announced any pricing yet? Knowing GitHub, their pricing will be very generous. This is me guessing completely here. For open source projects, it's probably gonna be free, but don't quote me on that. Let's see what happens in Q4. This is what Codespace looks like. It might look very familiar to you does look like VS Code. And you still get the live share where you can collaborate with other people. They might be using VS Code locally, you might be using it in the browser. It still all works seamlessly with all those awesome plugins that you get locally. This is really going to be a game changer. When you do get access, be it on beta or, or on GA, let me know what you think. I'm really, really interested to know. Also in Q4, we're gonna get GitHub Actions workflow visualization. And we don't know what that's gonna look like at the moment, but CircleCI, Jenkins version two, the new one, has some awesome visualization tools on how to visualize the workflow and showing which step of the build fails, which ones have dependencies so they don't move on to the next step until a previous step has completed. So it can be really efficient. You can break it down into reusable building blocks. This is gonna be really interesting. And now also on other CI platforms, if a step fails of a random failure, you can just rebuild that specific step rather than trying to rebuild the entire workflow, which can take a lot longer. I'd love to come up with a drawing or a sketch or an idea of what I think, but I'll leave it to your imagination. Let me know what you think it will look like. Send in your screenshots in the comments below or just in words, get right down some bullet points of what you think it will look like or work like. Also, what features you would like it to see. If you're in our community on GitHub, you would already see that we've got access to GitHub discussions. And it is awesome. We have beta access with topics enabled as well. So do come along and do have a look at that. In Q4, GitHub Discussions is coming out and this is gonna be brilliant. I know a lot of project maintainers don't like to have support or help issues raised in the issue section because they like to keep the issue section clean for actual actions that are gonna be performed on the project, like a bug or a feature or more documentation. So this is where GitHub Discussions is gonna be awesome because you can actually have the discussion, you can actually have it threaded and pick an answer. Let me show you. This is our community organization. If you'd like an invite, just raise an issue and we'll send you an invite to our GitHub organization. As you can see on our support repo, we have discussions and topics enabled. And you can see some of the discussions have already been answered with a big green tick on the right hand side. And down the left, you can filter by different topics. This is awesome. And here is our most recent discussion topic. There was someone asking about where's the best place to host a Python and a Django and Flask project. And you can see there are quite a few answers, some of them threaded, some of them are new. When the person who started the discussion is happy with an answer, they can select an answer and then that's the highlighted one. This is great. This is like issues on steroids. And if any actions come out of the discussion, it is possible then to raise an issue, which is going to be the action point for that feature or bug and it can reference back to the discussion topic as well. In Q4, GitHub are gonna be open sourcing their documentation. We all love open source, right? And we all like to make improvements when we go through something, we realize a small step is missing. And it might just be a small step, but for someone who is visiting it for the first time, that small step can take them hours to find out what is missing and to hunt around for it. So having everyone's input in the documentation side is gonna be really good to help improve visualization, formatting, and any little missing steps uh, who the person was writing the documentation. This is where crowdsourcing this information is great. So I hope you get involved in, in making improvements to the documentation. And think about giving back to the community and giving forward to the people who are gonna look at these documentation after you. I hope you enjoyed looking through the GitHub's public roadmap with me. And if you have any questions, any thoughts, leave a comment below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up 
subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and hit the bell button so you can get notified when I post new videos. It will help you upskill, it will help you get the job, the clients and the money that you deserve. I look forward to chatting with you all in our Discord and our GitHub organization. So do let me know if you'd like an invite to our community GitHub organization. It'll be great to get you into open source. And we're here to help, so don't worry. Any question, just raise a question publicly and someone in the community or myself will be able to reply to you to help you onto the next step in your journey into getting into open source. And no matter where you are in your journey in open source, there's always more to learn. I've been doing full stack development for over 15 years. I've been in the open source community for over 10. And I'm still learning every day. And that's what makes being in tech so much fun. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, an open source a day keeps Eddie away. Otherwise, I want to chase you through open source.